Greetings and welcome to Caribbean Vanguard. The two island nation of St. Kitts and Nevis has found themselves caught up in the midst of a crossfire between two millionaire companies. The first is MSR Media, which is a movie production company who have featured some films in the Federation, um, but somehow they decided to extend themselves and got into the CBI investment program to which they were approved through the alternative investment option. And they also got into the hotel industry. And then you have the Caribbean Galaxy, which is an Asian or Chinese organization who have been doing business in the Caribbean for a while. They are into the CBI and happen to be the primary organization when it comes to this program. There's a competition there. So it seems to me that MSR Media, sure, they may have some solid information, but at the same time, you cannot tell me that this is not about self. Because in some of their claims, or in one of their claims, they seem to show concern that the money that is being received for CBI is not being invested into the people or into the infrastructure. But it has nothing to do with the people. These folks are looking out for themselves. I could assure you of that. Dr. Denzel Douglas, Foreign Affairs Minister, was served with the MSR Media a RICO lawsuit. A RICO meaning Rocketeer Influenced and Corruption Organization Act of 1970. In addition to the lawsuit brought forth um, on Dr. Denzel Douglas, Mr. Philip Martinez, or the producer Philip Martinez, also took legal step against other Caribbean stakeholders. To list a few of these names that were mentioned, the first was Les Khan. Les Khan is a former head of St. Kitts Nevis Citizenship by Investment Unit and current CEO of Caribbean Galaxy. Another name that was brought up was McLeod Emanuel. He's a present CEO of St. Lucia CIU. Then you have Ying Jin of Caribbean Galaxy. Ying Jin is a primary figure in Caribbean Galaxy. When Mr. Philip Martinez and MSR Media was doing the investigation, as he claimed they were doing it for many years and have receipts, they have WhatsApp messages, they have bank receipts and everything. The folks that he titled the due diligence team allegedly found that some money dealing with the prison project was being redirected to Yin Jin. So she is definitely a key figure in all of this. Another name brought up was a former Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Timothy Harris. And then you have Foreign Lawrence, a Kittitian real estate developer. And lastly, you have Caribbean Galaxy itself, among others. These are some of the names that were brought up. Martinez also went as far as to throw some other names out there. He threw out the name Mark Brantley, who he said is a, is a witness. He cited Mark Brandley because in November 2023, former Premier Mark Brandley alleged that the difficulties with St. Kitts and Nevis Citizen by Investment Program stem from the St. Kitts Prison Project that is currently under construction. This money laundering, so you can understand, this money laundering supposedly happened between the year 2021 and 2022. Mark Brandley went on to say that service provider after service provider, expert after expert that I engage, all trace the difficulties that our program is having back to the jail project that was approved and signed off by Timothy Harris, the former prime minister of St. Kitts In addition to that, he said a whole lot more stuff, but to sum it up, he basically said that folks were not selling the units at the legal lawful price. They were selling it for a lot less. And that's where the problem came. 
So with all that's going on, it goes back to some of the videos I've made. It goes back to what our ancestors said. We cannot put things in the hand of other people. We cannot look to other people to be our savior. People of the Caribbean, I don't, it doesn't matter what country you live on, you cannot count on the politicians. I am not saying that the politicians are corrupt. Of course, you got corruption in every place, so some are. But the thing about it is they have pressure that's coming to them from other side. They have money that's waved in their face every single day. And eventually, somebody will cave. If not today, tomorrow, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. So we need to help these politicians. We need to protect them, protect our own politicians. And we do so by us being more organized, us being more centralized, and us getting to a point that we don't need to be relying on the government too much. We need to work towards that. We need to provide options for the Caribbean people. Politicians can easily say, hey, these local people don't care about me anyhow. They're gonna vote me out. They're gonna get tired of me, whatever. Or they can say, they can't do anything to me anyhow but vote me out. I'm gonna still get my money. I'm gonna still get my land. My family gonna be taken care of. We have to understand that people who respect you out of convenience are going to disrespect you the first opportunity they get. And you don't ever hear the word respect go hand in hand with weakness. So we have to gain strength and strength is through unity. We have to become organized. We have to become wise. We really got to get on the same page. We don't have to have the same religion. We don't have to have the same of anything. But when it comes to that unity, our vision for the Caribbean, then we need some of us to really get it together. And others will come along once a few of us get it going. Because once we do that, then now your government know that they have a strong group of people in the Caribbean. Now they know they're not dealing with no dunce in the Caribbean. So we got we to gotta take their respect back from them.